Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time, we're going to be watching Steel Blue vs. Rymark. I'm Shadow333, your commentator, and going to be on Finn's Revenge because that's what they played on. There's no real reason to do it. Just they played on this map. Very, very hovercraft friendly map. I expect we see hovercrafts, possibly gunships. You can see lots of water. In case you've not played Spring Commander, this is. Well, that's where it's from. If you have played Spring Commander, it should be very familiar. Because that was that was a popular map in that game too. And in that game, hovercrafts were also really useful, though that meant going Aeon and building a bunch of Auroras, but in this case, it means building a jump jet factory. Okay, Rymark going for jump jet. That's an interesting choice on this map. I'm not sure why. And light vehicles for steel blue. Neither player trying to take advantage of the water. Neither player going for hovercrafts. Making me look silly. Guys, why are you making me look silly? But yeah, that's apparently what they're going for. I'm a little surprised by that, but there you have it. So, Jump Jet Factory and Light Vehicle Factory. We do have... Okay, Puppies are coming in. No, sorry. Pyro is coming in from Rymark. No surprises there. Puppies would have been surprising. Scorchers coming in quickly. No darts for Steel Blue. Just pure Scorchers. And no Builders either. Not getting any Masons. Just getting 10 Scorchers. Going for a massive Scorcher Rush. I guess he's expecting Hovercrafts and... Against Scrubbers, I... I don't think Scorchers would do especially well. I mean, enough Scorchers, yes. Maybe. It depends a lot on positioning because of the Gauss, the line splash of the Gauss weapons, but that's that's an interesting choice. And it looks like... Oh, Rymark is actually apparently watching this game. I don't know if you're using placeholders. He's asking, he's wondering if he's using placeholders in this match. I have no idea. No clue. I do not watch these replays before I cast them. When I watch them, it's like they are live. Great practice for when they are live, too. But Pyro coming in along the southeast side. It is going to be encountering another Scorcher, and that will kill it. The Scorcher is going to be able to kill it in time. That Pyro, it actually, no, it's going to jump away. It's... It does survive. The Scorcher actually does burn to death. A little unfortunate for that Scorcher, but its life had to end on account of fire. Fire has a distressing tendency to do that to things. That's why it's best not to just randomly set fires as you go through your life. If I have any word of advice for any of my viewers, it's don't randomly set fires. It's just not a good idea. But that pyro... That pyro managed to make it work. But I guess that's all the pyros do. So honestly, the pyro cannot really take my advice to heart. This pyro, however, did live. It did escape. It's now back, and Rymark will be able to heal it up. Should be able to do that. It should be doing that, too. And Rymark, he is taking more of his side of the map. He is getting an economic advantage. He has about... Let's see, how many metal extractors does he have? He has six metal extractors. And no overdrive at this point. All that purple grid means is nothing. It means zero overdrive. Steel Blue, on the other hand, does have about five. Anyway, one of those is Rymarks. He has four. So that's plus the commander. By the way, the commander, it's in case you are. In case you haven't seen this in a while, commanders do give four metal and six energy. See in the tooltip right now, four metal, six energy. The total is shown there, so it's hard to show when they're not. When they're building something, if they're idle, I can show it. So yeah, plus four, plus six. Big difference. It was plus four, plus four for sport comms and less for everyone else, but yeah, at the moment, it's actually considerably more powerful, so there is a bit more leeway if you don't have as many mexes. However, force, a couple forces of pyro... Or, not a force of pyros. A two, pair of pyros coming in here. This stage of the game, it feels like a force of pyros, but yeah, it's just a pair of pyros coming in. Gonna be able to raid out, getting rid of one of the metal extractors. Gonna get rid of Steel Blue's commander from the looks of it. Or at least going to try. A Scorcher is coming in to try to deal with this. And Rymark not going for it. Going to get onto this hill. Just going to avoid that entirely. Not a bad idea either. But that being said, Rymark is going to go around deal with this defender. Losing one of his pyros to a defender. The other power will be able to tear apart all these defenders, however. And the Scorcher is going to try to do what they can. But they are not able to get it. They cannot fire through that hill. They do not have line of sight. And they can't go up the hill either. So this pyro tearing apart everything. Now, back to the base. Yeah, some placeholders are being built, so apparently this game has placeholders. Not sure this game has... Let's see, Rymark, his commander is level 1. It has a rocket launcher. So yes, apparently, Rymark, you are right. This is the game where you try to use rocket comm and placeholders. I don't know how the game went, but apparently that's... That's this game, or at least this game involves such things. However, the pyro is going to go down to the slashers. Just about, no, getting out of range. And... Gets rid of the Metal Extractor. Another Metal Extractor goes down. Still losing a lot of economy to this. And losing a lot of defenses as well. Another couple Pyros coming in along the north, along the northeast side of his base. That would probably tear it apart. 
There's not anything left to deal with this. This one Scorcher, that's it. There's no Lotuses, there's no Defenders, there's nothing. Absolutely nothing is here to deal with this. Okay, well I guess Reimark has to then send in more. And send in more you shall! Two placeholders with two Pyros and another Pyro. Three Pyros! Slasher's coming in to try to deal with this in advance, and Reimark coming back with his own Rocket Launcher. Gonna be able to, wow, deal quite a bit of damage to these Slashers. Two of them are moving, sorry, all but two are moving. All of them are now moving, trying to get away. Two of them going down. Three of them going down. The Pyros, the Slashers are in the only position they can be to defend, but they are not gonna last long. All the Slashers go down. That did not work out one bit. Another Slasher coming along the west side of the map, and it's gonna try to harass out as best it can, which should be pretty effective, depending on what units are being built at the time. I think given the timing that it's gonna come in right as one of these Pyros is complete, which won't go well for it. However, at the same time, Rymark is going to be dealing quite a bit of damage to Steel Blue's southeast side of his base. And given that both players are going for pure land factories, there's no way that these corner expansions are going to be taken. Excuse me. And those corner expansions, that's four metal each. That's eight metal for each expansion. That is huge. Now, Leveler has been built. That would be effective, except for the fact that it died too quickly. But the second one, much more effective. Fires are set inside of Steel Blue's base, but that won't be it lasting too long. However, one of the placeholders actually fall, accidentally falls into the other placeholder's black hole. Well, not black hole. It's, it's called a black hole launcher. It's not really a black hole. However, Slasher, it does get in there. It does start to defend, and those pyros were done, but they were moved out of position. They will be coming around to defend against this Slasher, and ultimately not going to do much damage. This Solar Collector is getting repaired fast and is being destroyed. Yeah, it's got to be a better name. It's not a black hole. That's not what it is. By no means is it a black hole, but it's something. It holds them in place. I guess a gravity well? I guess that works. Yeah, so the gravity well. So yeah, placeholder fell into its allies' gravity well. <sighs> Took me too long to actually say that. It completely lost the effect. <laughs> All the ethos of that is gone. But that is still going to be a powerful attack. I mean, Rymark has twice the economy right now. He does have... No overdrive. This is purely on reclaim and on metal extractors. But these metal extractors are giving 2.8 each. I mean, this is this is a very high metal map. There's three metal per extractor basically, and four on these corner bases. I guess basically just figured that it wasn't worth it. I mean, there's three in each main and the main land. There's three metal per base. Another eight metal is nice, but I suppose not worth going for hovercrafts or gunships or amphibious bots for. Given how it can be tricky to use those factors if you don't know how. Anyway, Rymark, I think, has also been trying to test out how jump bots work in general. One of the levelers does get torn away, put into a gravity well. The other levelers going down quickly to the pyros. And the last one, able to deal with the pyros quite effectively, but still does die. Not before killing all the pyros, though. That was a very nice trade for Rymark, actually. Rymark is still quite a ways ahead in terms of economy. Bunch of levelers coming in though, five le or four levelers rather, well five actually behind, one behind. Four levelers are coming in, and these placeholders have to move back. Rymark is retreating his forces. That is going to be. No. Rymark is going to be retreating all his forces. I don't want to be paying attention to these units. Rymark has a nice defensive setup though. These levelers are not going to last long. He does have. Oh, should point out. I think he has. Is he have health fires? He has a Hellfire Grenade. He does not have the Napalm Warhead on his rocket launcher, though. Just his Hellfire Grenade D-Gun. Or... No, apparently not a D-Gun. Apparently it's just a regular attack. Okay, then. Well. Powerful, then. Gauss Turret. Haven't seen this much, but yeah, it's Gauss Turret being set up for Steel Blue. So that's going to be interesting. I... You don't see these much. They are Gauss weapons. They are going to be line splash damage. It's going to be dealing quite a bit of damage. Based on the position of Rymark's units, I don't think Rymark's going to attack it directly. It should deal a fair amount of damage. It should be somewhat effective, but I think Rymark... He's starting to reclaim this with his commander. His commander is right there to deal with this. A bunch of Ravagers being built up and point out the factory. Building more and more Ravagers. Rymark does have a great position with the place holders. Just stopping the Ravagers from doing anything. And there we go. There's a nice combo. A Hellfire Grenade on top of all that. All that damage. So much burning. So much fire. And the placeholders, once again, keep those Ravagers in place with the fire. Although the fire is kind of dissipated, but... Same time, Sumos are now coming in for Rymark. First one has been built, second one's coming in shortly. And Rymark, once again, about to placehold this. 
probably. He does burn out a couple of the Ravagers, a couple more Ravagers, but they are not actually dying that quickly. Rymark actually has to retreat nonetheless. He's doing a great job holding them, but this he needs more support units. Probably more Pyros. He's getting more... Su the Sumos are here, but they need support. Like, not just Sumo. Get more stuff. Yeah, placeholders at least keeping the Ravagers at bay. The Ravagers aren't doing much, but... At this point, more Ravagers are forthcoming. Actually, no. Steel Blue has stopped. He stopped building Ravagers. I'm not sure what he's building. He has no other factories on the map. So I don't see what he's doing right now. I think he just forgot. I think he's actually just not paying attention to his factory. He's starting to... He is accessing metal. He needs to build stuff. His factory needs to build stuff. Oh, he has a shield block factory. Okay. But still, either of his factories needs to build stuff. Possibly both. But Rymark is coming in. He has the sumo. The sumo is ready. It is here, and it is going to be dealing a ton of damage once it gets in. And another Gauss turret being built. I don't know why Steel Blue is focusing on the Gauss turrets. Those are not typical. So I'm not sure what the point is. A bunch of gravity wells being set up for Steel Blue. Keeping his commander just tied up and upside down. And in the ground. At the same time, Ravagers are coming in, which would have been a probably better target here for the placeholder. Sumo doesn't actually do much. Doesn't hit the Ravagers. The Ravagers are getting... They are getting locked up, and they are getting killed as well. The Gauss turret is done, but that's not going to last long. It's also out. The thing with the Gauss turret is that it takes less damage when it's not firing. But it is firing, so it's not going to help much. And Steel Blue actually sets up an eraser. And No, it doesn't have a clickbot factor. He just built a sneaky peat and turned it into an eraser. So this Gauss turret is cloaked at any rate. It's going to be a bit of a pain, but still, Steel Blue about to lose his commander. And that goes down quickly. And the roaches, three roaches to deal with that sumo, still not quite enough. However, roach eraser combo is very powerful. I don't know now, I don't know why I haven't seen this at all. I have never seen this, I wish I had. Because this is a great combo, and now they come in, nothing the sumo could do against that. The sumo, still alive, mind you. But another roach is going to finish that thing off. Nope, not quite, never mind, it's 800 damage a shot. Yet another roach. Takes a lot of roaches to kill this thing, but they're all cloaked. And this is why I'm surprised no one's used Eraser Roach or Eraser Tick combo. Because you can't stop them. They're cloaked while they're coming at you with the Eraser. It requires a ton of power, but Steel Blue has that energy available, so it's not hard to do. But yeah, I've never seen anyone use Eraser in any game. Successfully. Or at all, actually, really. Never seen anyone use Eraser. I'm just surprised I haven't. I mean, yeah, it's expensive. It requires all, it's 600 metal. It requires a lot of power in order to run. I'm not sure exactly how much. Looks like it requires about 16 and a half power. So about 17 energy per second is required to power this thing. But actually, Steel Blue is starting to run out of energy too, so he's got to build more power plants. That is one thing to point out. He needs to build a lot more power plants, especially as he gets reclaimed and his metal is evening out with his energy. He needs to get more power plants. This is the reason why erasers don't work if they are not used well. Because metal reclaim means your energy is being used if your energy was higher than your metal. He needs to build power plants. His eraser is going to stop working pretty soon. And with that, his little roach trick as well. This second sumo coming in here. And Ramark building another sumo. He has three sumos. One in production. Two already built. And a bunch of puppies will be following soon after. But yeah, this eraser... Actually, a little bit surprised that it's not going down. Interesting. Is it on priority or something? Okay, so apparently it's just that the Eraser is getting first pick on energy. That's good. It does mean that the production is a little bit low for Steel Blue, lower than he would like. He is actually excessing metal as a result. He needs to build more power plants, but at least the Eraser is not losing out. It is taking first dibs on power. No, no priority settings, just it takes first dibs on power. Good to know. Wolverine's being set up to get rid of these sumos. I'm... These are very tricksy tactics. I must say I do appreciate them, but I think... Against sumos... Man, for light vehicles against sumos, I guess impalers would work for the range. Dominatrices would just be... That would be evil. It'd be kind of neat to see happen, but that would be evil. And... More placeholders being set up for Rymark. He does have a nice defensive line on the west side and not the east side. The east side is actually not defended very well. That is a stinger. And the commander. That's the main thing. The commander is the biggest obstacle. If you can get rid of the commander, that's huge. And more roaches to get rid of... Well, the sumo... Or just knock the sumo away. Knock the sumo back. That's all I can really do at this point. However, uh, this sumo here taking a fair amount of damage. It's getting rid of a mason, getting rid of power plants. And okay, okay, now the eraser is starting to lose power. The eraser is running out of power. It needs more of it. 
Needs more power, does not have it. There are roaches in play. They are going to be able to get rid of this if they get rid of that sumo. But they have to get rid of the sumo. That's a big thing. These sumos are... Well, there's more of them coming. There's five of them so far. Five in play on the map right now. Two of them already inside Romark's base. A bunch of roaches just get blown up by sumo's disruptor beams. More roaches coming in, and all these roaches are cloaked. Unfortunately, the roaches are now going to be dealing more damage to Steel Blue's own base than to Rymark's units. There's not much that can be done here for Steel Blue. I don't think there's... It's... It's tough. Another roach blows itself up. Tries to get rid of that sumo, but it's going to take two more roaches to get rid of these sumo... Get rid of one of these sumos. And now, down go the caretakers. All the caretakers go down to a sumo stomp. And that's it. Steel Blue throws in the towel. Valiant effort, but against that many sumos, I think it's just a matter of... You had to have more energy to begin with. Or, not energy so much. as You had to have more metal. You had more, more resources to begin with. But as a counter, I suppose a bunch of Dominatrices would have at least turned it around. Turned it against Rymark. The big thing about... The biggest thing about Sumos is their health. They don't have a huge amount of damage, but... I mean, 125 damage per second. Okay, that's a fair amount of damage. But they have 12,500 health. That is the big thing. They tank a ton of damage. With that setup, I mean... It's tough to say. Ravagers wouldn't have been a bad idea in, in large quantities. But yeah, it's a tough call. Anyway, I will be back with another game shortly. It'll be between, I believe, Eltro and the Sponge. Yep, that's right. So I'll be back with that in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned for that.